Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be walking you through what I personally do to get over 1000 FPS in Fortnite Chapter 3. Now, before you say anything, yes, I know it's not possible for everyone watching to get over 1000 FPS. I have a really beefy PC, that's the main reason I get good frames. However, even if you are on a low-end PC or even a laptop, I promise you guys right now, this guide will improve your FPS. We're gonna talk about the best in-game Fortnite settings, different Windows tweaks, NVIDIA options. We're even going to look at a secret FPS boost that nobody else really covers on YouTube. So make sure to drop a like if this video helps you out. I can almost guarantee it will. So drop the like. But without further ado, let's get right on into it. Alright, so starting off, we're going to be talking about XMP. Simply put, XMP, or Extreme Memory Profiles, is overclocking your RAM. That may sound very scary, especially since overclocking your GPU or your CPU can lead to a lot of computer problems, but trust me, your boy got you covered, and XMP is different. You see, whenever you buy RAM for your computer, RAM is random access memory, it is the sticks that you have in your computer, they help your processor out by storing data, your RAM by default fault runs at a much slower speed than what's advertised. Take for example, if you bought DDR4 RAM that was advertised at 3200 megahertz, your RAM sticks will not run at that speed out of the box. Instead, the RAM will most likely run at 2100 megahertz, or technically a little bit more than that, and you can only get the speed that you paid for, the advertised higher speed, when you turn on XMP. Now before I actually show you guys how to check whether XMP is already turned on, and of course, how to turn it on on yourself, I want to assure you guys that XMP is very very safe and it is extremely beneficial for your Fortnite FPS. You know how I just said that your RAM helps out your processor aka your CPU? Well, that is exactly the reason why your RAM and turning on XMP helps out your Fortnite FPS so dang much. Just think about it for a second. As I've said in the past, Fortnite is very CPU intensive. What this means is that rather than your GPU doing a lot of the work or maybe your CPU and your GPU GPU splitting it, your CPU will do the majority of the work when playing Fortnite. Therefore, to prevent your game from becoming CPU bound, that would give you a bunch of stutters and just really bad FPS, probably what a lot of you guys are going through, you can make your CPU run faster by turning your RAM speed up, aka enabling XMP. In order to see whether or not you already have XMP enabled, go down to your little tiny search bar and just bring up your task manager. This is what it looks like. You're gonna wanna go to the top tab and hit performance. Boom, over here. On the left, you can see there's like your CPU, your RAM, disk, all this stuff. You're gonna wanna go to memory. That's what your RAM is. And down towards the bottom right, you're gonna be able to locate your speed. So right now, I turned XMP off. That's how helpful I am. But I turned it off and by default, you can even look, it is at 2133 megahertz. That's the default for any decent RAM out of the box. I think it has something to do with like compatibility. Manufacturers make it this speed so it works for every PC. I mean, it's smart when you think about it, but this is not the advertised speed that I paid for. My RAM can run upwards of 3000 megahertz all the way up to I think 3600. No matter what, this is too low. We want something higher. And that's why we're going to turn on XMP. Surprise, motherfucker. The reason I'm with this camera is because I cannot record myself going to the motherboard BIOS on my actual computer. It sounds complicated, but trust me, it's not. The motherboard BIOS is obviously where you can go and enable XMP. So here I am at my setup. You can see the screen. Let's move this. Get the hell out of there. And what I'm going to do is go down to the little Windows button. I'm going to click the power. And from there, I am going to restart my PC. It has been restarted. And as soon as it actually restarts, we'll see it in a second. I'm going to start spamming this key right here, F2. So the screen went black. I'm gonna start spamming it. You can even see it tells you, well it did for a second because I pressed it so fast. It quite literally said to press F2 to access the motherboard BIOS. And that is exactly what these things are. Oh my gosh, it looks very scary, but I mean, it kind of is. But it's not that scary, okay? Yours may look a little bit different just because we're gonna have different manufacturers. You can see it says like the time, my CPU over here, all this other nerdy stuff. But in order to actually 
actually enable XMP the easy way, I suggest going down there and pressing easy mode. Come on, press it. Nice. Easy mode is a lot less scary. All it shows you is your CPU voltage, motherboard temperature. It shows you your different RAM sticks. All of them you can see are running at 2133 megahertz. The default out of the box. Low clock speed that we do not want. We want it to be faster. And what I'm gonna do is you see this right here? It says XMP. All I'm gonna do is freaking go from disabled and I'm just gonna enable it. Boom. On the right here, this is the actual XMP profile. These are given to me from the manufacturer of the RAM. Manufacturer. They set up the whole profile so it works the best. Over there is the voltage. There's the different timings. The megahertz, 3600. That is what I paid for. And essentially, that is really all you have to do to actually enable XMP. I think on AMD it might have a different name just because XMP is technically from Intel. And then all I would do is press save and exit it. It's going to show whatever changed and then I press OK and it would all restart. Now the reason I'm not going to do this just yet is because I want to show what you should do if it does not work. Basically if it posts. So if it posts it'll be a black screen and then it will go into safe mode. Safe mode essentially means it did not work. Either the voltage was wrong, the timings, the megahertz was too high or too low. And because of that it did not work with that specific XMP profile. So what you can do then is either just disable XMP maybe do some research on it and see what the best timings and voltage would be for yourself. Once you figure that out, that's when you can actually go to advanced mode because this is how you can change the stuff yourself. I personally do not recommend this unless you know what you're doing. This will technically void your CPU warranty, I think. I mean, maybe if you're on AMD, it's fine, but Intel, I don't think they like this. If you're not that confident, don't do it. All I'm gonna do is go to AI Tweaker and you can see this is the profile we enabled. So I believe there's two. There's XMP1 and XMP2. These are the different profiles that the manufacturer sets up. They set up everything from the different speeds to the voltage, the timings. I never really dabble in any of this stuff. When my PC used to post, I would just change the megahertz. So for example, I would go down to the DRAM frequency. It's this one right here. And I would change it to lower than what I was advertised. So 3600 is the highest. You never want to go above that. That is how you destroy your PC. Do not do that. You want to simply go to something lower, like 3200 megahertz in my case. Remember, 3600 is the highest that I paid for. And obviously, this is way higher than 2133, which is what it's currently at with XMP off. So DDR4, 3200 megahertz. You're essentially kind of manually changing the XMP profile that the manufacturer gave you because it did not work in my case. And then from the advanced mode, I'm going to go hit exit. It's going to give you a little more options, so like load optimized defaults, discard changes. If nothing works and it keeps posting, just do discard changes and don't even worry about it. But if it does end up working and you do it manually, save changes and reset. We're going to turn on XMP and we're going to press OK. Now my PC reset. Hopefully it does not explode. Boom! Imagine that. Oh, holding this camera hurts. But yeah, now it's gonna come back on. It should not post because then I would look like a bad YouTuber breaking people's PCs. Dun 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 dun! And look at that! Wow, it worked. Let's now go into this camera view of me on my PC. Haha! <laughs> Yo! We're back in the PC. It's no longer on the other camera. Yeah. But again, we are going to bring back up the task manager. We're going to go to performance, over to memory, and look at the speed, boys! 3200 megahertz! Oh my god! XMB has been enabled, our speed is running way faster, and of course, as a result, we're gonna get way better Fortnite FPS. And just to prove to you guys, I'm not a fraud. I've just loaded up a blank creative map on performance mode. And when I look up to the sky... Oh, come on. Give it to me. A thousand FPS. Ooh, we're getting 1100. Sheesh. Chapter 3 is not too bad, huh? And by the way, I'm getting 1100 FPS without my CPU or my GPU being overclocked. The only thing I technically overclock is my RAM, which, like I said before, is just turning on XMP. It's 
it's not really overclocking because you're just getting the advertised speed you paid for in the first place. But hey, if all the PC nerds want to say, yes, it is technically overclocking, Jerry, and you stupid noob. That is fine because it is the best and the safest overclocking. It also has gotten me the most FPS gains. So yeah, that is XMP. That is why you should turn it on. If you have any questions, you can ask them down below in the comments. There's a lot of very smart people in my comments section when I make these videos. The last time they were very angry that my motherboard bios were not technically up to date. So I apologize. I still have not updated them because that is just the type of guy I am. I'm a troll. I can't lie. I also can't build or edit. <laughs> but on that note, let's move on to the next FPS boost tip slash trick. I'll see you guys there. The next chapter three FPS boost trick actually has to do with the home screen, kind of. You guys see how my tilted background is like blurry? It's kind of pixelated and it does not look how it should. Well, the reason for that is not to do with any of your in-game Fortnite settings. So these are what mine look like right now. Obviously I'm on performance mode. You can see my textures are on low, meshes are on high, but even if I go to epic textures and I apply it, nothing changes with the background. It's still pixelated and it still looks like crap. Well, boys, the reason for that, like I said, is not in your actual Fortnite settings. I actually think you should kind of leave it this way, as you'll see in a second, but to change it if you wanted to and to kind of understand why it happens, all you're gonna do is X out of Fortnite, you're gonna close that bish up, and you're going to go to the Epic Games Launcher, which I do not have on my home screen. Eh? Okay, I guess we gotta search it up because I'm blind. And what we're going to do is in the Epic Games Launcher, Launcher, go to your library. This is where mine is. There's two different ways yours can look. You can see there's like a little viewing thing over here. You could click it so it looks like this or so it looks like that. I actually like the other one because it shows you your time played. I have 162 days played. Oh my god. Let me know down below how many days played you guys have. But regardless, no matter what your view looks like, just go to the three little dots. I think in this one it is, it's over to the right, right here. But yeah, go over to the three little dots dots and click options. So options, boom, that is going to bring you to the Fortnite installation options. And if you could guess, which one do you think is the one that would result in Tilted not being blurry? Yes, it is high resolution textures. It literally says it's a file required to play Fortnite more beautifully. <laughs> I mean, it's 21 gigabytes. Should I just install it for the memes? The way you would know if you have it installed or not is if you click on it, there's going to be a download size of 20 gigabytes. If you already have it, there's not going to be any download size. It's already going to be unchecked. <sighs> Should we just download it for science? Oh, I did it. Oh, God. Let's see how long it takes. Two hours later. How long has it been? I don't know, but it finally loaded up and we're going to go into game to prove why high resolution textures is useless. So keep in mind, that was 20 gigabytes worth of storage on my PC. Do you guys know how much other games and just random stuff you can have in general? And look, <laughs> the tilted background is no longer blurry. 20 gigabytes just so my background looks a bit better, even though my character seems to be, uh, I don't really know what's going on. Let's load up creative really quickly. Bro, that was really 20 gigabytes of storage for my game to look the exact same. Do you guys see any difference? in high resolution textures and non high resolution textures. The only difference was tilted isn't blurry. What about the FPS though? That's the real question. Imagine I got higher FPS. Oh no, not higher. It's a little bit lower. It's still pretty decently high. It does not make the biggest difference on my PC, but I mean, it's more about the 20 gigabytes. The fact that, oh wait, do builds look different? Kind of? Um, am I losing my mind or do they look kind of different? What's my FPS? So oh, it's dropping while I crank. That might not be good. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I feel like they kind of look different, but also no. Well, either way, my FPS is a bit lower. It's definitely dropping as I build way more. Yeah, the build's 100%. They're like a bit more textured, and I don't know if I like that. That not only makes it harder to see through, but my input delay is going to be higher. Oh. I'm just missing basic edits. So, dude, this is so not worth <laughs> for 20 gigabytes. Oh, hell no. That is why my kind of trick or tip for this, my recommendation for this is to go down to the options again and have high resolution textures off, basically. <gasps> <clears throat> 
uninstall them, excuse me. So all I had to do for that is just uncheck it. There's gonna be no download size, but you can see the required storage space went from 43 gigabytes to 22. That is half the space for your game to look the exact same. By the way, I'm gonna press apply. This is what happens. It's gonna update. It should be, yeah, look how fast that is. Bro, 20 gigabytes for less FPS. Your game looks kind of worse and it's 20 gigabytes. That is just not worth it. So yeah, uninstall them. And and let's move on. Second to last FPS boost trick for the video and for Fortnite Chapter 3, we're going to go and type up Control Panel. It is an application you can see right there. That's what it looks like. Yours might look a little different if you have different view by. So there's large icons, small icons, but it does not matter because on the top right, the search, you're searching the Control Panel. You're just going to type in Advanced. I did not get all the way there, but you can see this is what comes up and you want to go under System, View Advanced advanced system settings. This is going to pop up. We'll X this out and it is your system properties window, hardware, system protection, remote. You're going to go under advanced, which it should come up by default. That's what we typed in, but you're going to go to performance where it says visual effects, processor scheduling, all that stuff. And then this is going to come up. This is the performance options, which are going to change a lot about what your PC and just Windows 10 in general looks like. What most people have by default, I believe is let Windows Windows choose what's best for my computer. So if we click that, you're gonna see it just enables all of them. And if I apply it, you can see it kind of looks a little bit different, like the icons. It would look a lot more different. Oh. What is that face? Uh, it would look a lot more different if you went diving into Windows 10 and stuff, or even Windows 11. But what I recommend you guys do is just press adjust for best performance. So that's gonna turn them all off, but do not leave it like this. If you leave it like this and you apply, it's gonna look really, really bad. Let me show you. So look at that. Yeah, there's no more thumbnail icons in my actual videos. The whole font is different. I just feel like it doesn't look as nice. So what I recommend you guys do is in this, Go to smooth edges of screen fonts and then also press show thumbnails instead of icons and apply. This should change it all back. All of this stuff is normal again. It looks the same and this is going to get you better FPS than having all of these different things on. This is literally your performance options people. So you don't need all this animated stuff like animations in the taskbar, all this random crap, drop shadows. All you really need are these two, at least in my opinion. You could obviously go back to let Windows choose what's best for my computer. But to me, and to get the best FPS, this is what I personally use. Press OK. To finish off the video, it is what I usually do. It is, of course, my NVIDIA settings. The best, most optimal NVIDIA settings you can get. By the way, if you missed what I did, I right-clicked on my desktop and I went down to NVIDIA Control Panel. That is how you bring this up. Then, on the left, we are going to go under the 3D settings to adjust image settings with preview. For this, you want to click the middle one and then you're going to click Take Me There. So, boom. That is actually going to bring you, on the left, to Manage 3D settings and then over here on your global settings are all the best NVIDIA settings that I have selected. I'll scroll through them quickly. I'm not going to explain them but if you want to know what they do just click on the actual setting and if you go down it tells you what it does. Anyways these should be all the best. Low latency mode I have is on. Prefer maximum performance. This is really important if you want to get good FPS in Fortnite. Preferred refresh rate? I only have it on application controlled because I don't use 360 hertz. Fortnite is just not good enough to get you 360 FPS, but it's okay. We have all these other settings. This one is new. Driver default. Hopefully that's right because I've never seen that before in my life. And yeah, that is basically all the NVIDIA settings. So boom, apply. That is how you get the best FPS in Fortnite Chapter 3. Yeah! Overall, guys, that is the video. That is how you can improve your FPS in Fortnite Chapter 3. So if you guys enjoyed it or you learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel somewhere down here, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone on the screen for using code Jarian. I appreciate each and every one of you guys so, so much. Boys, I have some more baggers coming out soon. Don't you worry. Your support has been insane recently, and I am only going to keep it up. Otherwise, that is it from me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.